So hi everyone, we're back with our leader series and today I'll be talking to you about Princess Mir- Yuna Miratani. So this is the guy how to play Princess Yuna. Um, Princess Yuna is quite a special leader. Uh, th- her playstyle is very distinct from other leaders as every time she gains Solari, she gains one more but she starts with no water. So let's just jump right in. So I'll be running through a few things when to pick Yuna, some of the early game objectives, and how do you convert these early objectives into a win. So when do you pick Yuna? So let's talk about Yuna's uh, passive and signet ring. So the passive, right, is you start the game with no water, and that's a downside. However, what the upside you get is that every time you gain Solari, you gain the amount gained by one, increased by one. So it means that every time you gain Solari, you just increase the number by one. This is when it is on your turn. Okay, and if you have excess Solari, you can use 7 Solari to get a faction influence, 1 troop and 1 spice. Okay, I think the most attractive thing about this here is the faction influence. So first we'll talk about the smuggling operation passive. So Princess Yuna, because she begins the round with no water, the amount of spots she can visit at the start of the game is limited. She cannot go to Hardy Warriors or she cannot go to Haga Basin. This this leaves her um, very trapped in later positions as there are fewer spots that she can go to. Princess Yuna also is incentivized to go to a few spots early in the game, namely smuggling and wealth. This is because smuggling and wealth will trigger her passive and grant her additional salary. So, she needs Solari early, and these are the two early spots that she can get Solari. So other times when you want to consider to pick Yuna is that when there are cards that enable you to gain Solari on your turn. So things like Bounty Hunter or Organ Merchants, or cards that allow you to convert that excess Solari into a benefit, cards like Appropriate. Okay, so all these cards are great cards for Yuna. So all in all, you actually want to pick Yuna in early positions. Okay, you want to pick Yuna in early positions because she isn't blocked on majority of the spaces and she is able to get to her high priority spaces, smuggling and wealth. Okay, then because she goes early as well, she she's also one of the first to buy from the Imperium Row and she's able to purchase the Solari cards that she needs to fuel her game. So I would suggest to pick her in position 1 or 2. So let's talk about Yuna's early game objectives. Her early game objectives are actually just to get a lot of Solari and then to get Swordmaster and then High Council. So how much Solari is this? This is 13 Solari. And if you get a dream start, you can get to 13 Solari. So let me run you through how to get there. So in your first action, you go to Smuggling. I think Smuggling is the more contested of the two spaces. You get two Solari. Your next action, you go to Wealth. This grants you three Solari. When the next round comes around, you go to Smuggling again, and then you ship down. And all in all, this will grant you a total of 13 Solari. And with this 13 Solari, you're able to get both Swordmaster and High Council on rounds two. Sometimes you want to get them rounds two, rounds three, depending on your faction access and sword but you are able to get it round 2 as well. So look at what cards you're going to buy or whether you're going to play a certain type of cards. But if you if your opponents give this to you, this is the dream. Uh, if not, there's always ways to get round 2 Swordmaster and if you're not able to get round 2, round 2 Swordmaster and High Council, just aim for the Swordmaster round 2 and the High Council whenever next. So how do we convert these early game objectives into a win? So she still has a passive which allows her to generate excess Solari. And what this excess Solari is for is to fuel her signet ring. It also can fuel other cards like Appropriate and Opulence, but we won't be talking about it now. Also her signet ring allows her to use the Solari. And then she also has generally has Swordmaster early and high council. So how do you maximize Swordmaster? So generally, for any leader who has Swordmaster, the first thing he wants to do with his excess uh, actions is to go to Faction Spaces. That's because Faction Spaces naturally convert to victory points by friendships and uh, sometimes alliances. So 
by the end of the game, you need to have at least two in each faction to get the guaranteed points of friendships. And if you get to four and higher, you can keep the alliance. Okay, so generally, if you have a sword master, you want to be going to faction spaces. Okay, with your extra agent or your extra sword master, you can also use it to get Solari. I think that's the other thing that is very good with your you can do with your sword master. So in such case, you should be prioritizing smuggling heavily. So smuggling is one of the best ways to fuel your signet ring, which has the ability to uh, ground you one of the most powerful effects, with, uh, which is a uh, faction influence. Okay, because faction influence is the easiest way to convert to points. Okay, so we'll run through the argument of, should, so if you go smuggling, should you go up and down, or should you go up, up and down? So by the time you get Swordmaster, uh, this should be already round two, and so we'll talk about it from round three onwards. So maybe you go round three up and then round four down. If it's blocked, maybe you round three up, round five down, or something like that. Or if you go smuggle up, up, and then down, this will take three actions. But what that grants you is it grants you a faction influence, two troops, and 12 solari. So you might think that the going up, up, and down seems better. However, because um, we're talking about it from turn three, so if you have to go up, up, and down, it will be at minimum turn five. And if it's blocked one or two times, it becomes turn seven. Okay, so the thing about it is that because this is your main way of generating Solari, you can only use your signal ring after coming down. So this delays your signal ring till round 7, and it's unlikely that you'll use your signal ring twice. So as compared to just going up and down, going up and down only requires 2 rounds of smuggling. You can use your signal ring as early as round 4, and use your signal ring once again in round 6 or 7. Because you get 10 salary, you need 14 to activate it twice. The 4 remaining salary is very achievable by going to wealth again or to or win you win a combat or come in second in the combat and get some spare salary. Or other people just go to wealth or other people just go smuggling and just give you this uh, few remaining salary you need. So and and because of that, I strongly advise you to just go up and down, collect the the rewards and then activate your signal ring, which will grant you the faction influence. And then you can activate it twice. However, if you have access to interstellar shipping, I do advise you to go up and down at least to the second tier. So to get the faction influence to get the troops. Um, this is only in the case where you have interstellar shipping. At the same point in time, smuggling is still a very good action for you. But if you're into seller shipping access, you will want to hit at least to the second tier. So that's it. So that's it when with Swordmaster. You want to use your Swordmaster to either go to faction spaces or to get Solari to fuel your signet ring. Early Solari also allows you to get High Council fairly early on. High Council is one of the key enablers to buying Spice Muslows. So Spice Muslows gives you a victory point whenever you buy it, and having this default to uh, makes the remaining seven very achievable. It's achievable with, achievable with two or three, two persuasion cards, and a simple draw at either the research station or selective breeding. Early on, this also allows you to buy many cards. And what cards should you buy? You should just buy high costed S or A tier cards, or any S tier cards will do. I have various lists where I put up guides on which cards you should buy. So do a look at the guides and um, with your excess persuasion, do purchase these cards and let these cards carry you to victory. Okay, finally, how do we convert Solari into a win? So there are cards in the game that you can purchase and these are very valuable to Yuna. Cards like Appropriate and Opulence. So they can either just straight away get you victory points or they can get you victory points in indirectly through Appropriate getting you techs. Many techs will convert into victory points or convert into advantages which will lead to victory points. Uh, you can do a lot of fun stuff by acquiring techs on combat spaces as well. Um, things like invasion ships and all. So do look out for these cards and if they are available, buy them. But in most of the cases, in 99% of the cases, you'll be just using your signal ring. Uh, 
And your signaling is very strong because it gives you a faction bump. Uh, and the troop and spice are relevant as well. So you might think 7 Solari is a lot, but 7 Solari for Yuna is not too much. I think you should think about it as like 4 or 5 Solari for other leaders. So that's your baseline comparison. And then you can use your Solari uh, to get the faction bump. One specific thing you can do with this is that if you get to if you get to three influence with the emperor, you can use your signaling to get the remaining last bump while going to a city space. What that enables you to do that allows you to deploy six troops: two from garrison, one from the city space that you the troop they got from the city space, one from this ring, and two from the emperor alliance. So six troops in comparison to highliner, which is up to seven troops. It's almost comparable. It's a um, slightly smaller highliner that you can employ as early as turns five or six, you know. And then, if there's a victory point there, you can always claim it using this one move. Okay, so th this is one victory point to you. If it's round seven or eight, you know you can do this as well, and you'll be strongly in contention for winning the combat. Okay, so do keep this in your back pocket and pull it out when. When you can, um, often this is one of the pathways which gets you to the the last point that you need. So all in all, that's how you play Princess Yuna Moritani. Princess Yuna likes to get Solari and get Solari early by the objectives that grant you advantage through Solari. Get your Sword Master, get your High Council, and let that win you the game. Okay, I have a game where I played Princess Yuna and didn't buy very great cards, but I played against uh, Ariana who went turn 1 Tarexu Master and I very handily won round 7. So do check the game out, I will put a link to it that here. And once again, I thank you for watching. If you want to see any other leaders, do write it in the comments and I'll try my best to, to meet that. Hope you enjoyed the video, see you around.